Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do another quick video in my carving tips series. And what I wanted to talk about today was splitting wood. Um, now there's obviously a number of different ways you can do that and I've got a couple of examples here, um, sort of what I use fairly regularly. Um, and really it was just a quick sort of couple of tips as to uh, what I would use to split down a sort of piece of wood like this. Um, so what I've got here are first and foremost is my fro. Um, now you've seen me use this in a number of my other videos. Really, really useful piece of kit. If you can afford to get one or you've got the ability to get hold of one, highly recommend them. Um, really useful for just lots of general sort of carving use, splitting off stock, that kind of thing. Um, secondly, I've got my ax. Um, now I split down with this quite regularly. Um, doesn't have to be a carving ax like this one. You know, you can use any, any kind of sort of bushcraft style ax. Um, and again, it's a really, really useful way of doing it. Now, you're generally going to be using an axe for carving, um, so you've basically got something that you can already use if you don't want to carry around or, or go to the expense of buying something like a fro. A um, little bit controversial, but here I've got one of my knives. Um, now, you can split with a knife, also known as battening. Um, as I say, a lot of con uh, controversy over whether you should batten with a knife. Um, I have no problem with it, I know other people do. Um, may do a video about that separately at some point, but it, as far as I'm concerned, perfectly valid way of doing it. Um, and then really, if you're out in the field, um, especially if you're sort of, you've just taken down a tree and you want to split it off into sections, you can use one of these, which is a wedge. Um, now this is a, a sort of a cast metal wedge that I tend to use. I've got a few of these. Don't use them very often, but if you have got them or you can get hold of them fairly cheaply, I find it something that's useful having in your sort of woodworking, wood carving kit. Um, but what I'll do, I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer in, guys. I'm just going to give you a demonstration on a couple of these methods just with this piece of timber I've got here. Right then, guys, so I'm going to start off using my fro, uh, which, as I say, you've seen before. Now, normally, I tend to um, split smaller pieces of wood than this, um, and normally I wouldn't bother putting on the handle um, just because it kind of gets in the way a little bit. But the benefit the handle does give you, especially on larger pieces, is it allows you to lever down um, and split off wood, especially if it's a long piece and you're trying to sort of get a, a, a decent split all the way along. Um, and all you do with your fro, is make sure you've got your piece of timber sort of fairly solid and um, what you can do if it's a little bit wonky where it's been cut you can always cut off the bottom just to square it off so it's nice and stable on this surface and all you'll do is just literally line it up on your piece of wood along the line that you want to split you'll take a mallet or, or something heavy um, if you've got a metal fro you don't want to use a metal hammer because you can very easily damage this so you always want to use something wooden like a little mallet or beetle like this um, and once you've lined up you just need to give it a good first hit just to get it into bite so it's nice and lined up um, and then following that you just keep hitting it um, until it splits all the way through. You want to leave a little bit sticking out the end just so that if it gets stuck anywhere you can carry on and knock it down. Um, so I'll give you a quick demo. Once you get to this point, you can then start levering. Um, now it's obviously not split all the way through, that's fine, you can always go from the other side, but you can use this lever just to carry on splitting off like so. Now this is a fairly well seasoned piece of wood, um, but again you can kind of get to, you can kind of see the point. If that had been fresh, it probably would have split all the way down. Um, now I'm not going to bother doing the other side just yet. Um, but that really is the basics of the throw. You'll line it up, you'll hammer it down, give it a bit of a twist with the handle if you're using it, and it gives you a nice um, split out on your wood. Now, I've actually got a little bit of a plan for this, so what I want to get, essentially, is a square piece of wood here. Um, so, moving on, I'll take my axe, and exactly the same scenario, what you want to do is line up your axe, like so, and exactly the same thing, you just hammer it down with uh, a mallet. Now, there are some people who think that this will do damage to your axe. Um, I've never found that to be the case. The risk is, is that by hammering on the head, you could loosen it in the handle. Um, now, although I use this fairly regularly, I don't use it for pieces as large as this normally. So if it's just a smaller piece of wood, sort of half the size of this, you're not gonna have to put too much effort in couple of taps just to get it to bite. Obviously your axe is going to be a lot sharper than the fro which is generally quite blunt. Um, and again, and you can always carry on knocking that down. Now again, 
The other risk here is you can use the handle to lever this. You don't want to be using it too heavily because again you're putting stress on the handle that it's not designed for. But it will allow you to sort of split this out. Now I'm going to leave that as it is just so I can give you a quick demo of something else. And that is the wedge. Now if you're in a situation like this, especially with a larger piece of wood, certainly larger than this, what you can do is take your wedge, you can insert it down sort of part way, give it a bit of a tap in, I'm going to lift this back up just so you can see what I'm doing, and you can hammer your wedge further down into that split. Now if you have a number of wedges, uh, which I do somewhere, though I don't think I'm going to need them, you can get to this point, that will have opened up a little bit down here, you can then put another wedge in and you just carry on, carry on, carry on until you split the whole thing. Now again, I didn't need them for that, but you can see it's a fairly even split, obviously the split's going to run with the grain, um, which is absolutely fine. Now, last thing I want to show you, and again, this is where things get a bit controversial, you can use a knife like this, this is my SE6, it's, it's quite a heavy duty knife, it's a, more of a survival knife than a bushcraft knife, but I do use it for both. Um, and again, exactly the same thing, you'll line it up, make sure you've got some sticking out the end so that you've got something to hit on if you get stuck part way through. Um, and this obviously won't be as, um, as effective as the other two or the other three methods, um, but it does still work. So again, you'll get it to bite just so it's lined up where you want it. and you just follow it all the way down. Now again, with a fresh piece of wood, um, the splits tend to work a little bit better, um, but again, for our purposes, you know, it's exactly what we want to see. Um, and again, especially with smaller pieces of wood, so if you're, if you're putting together firewood or something like that, you can use your knife very gently and just split pieces off. Now, that wasn't an ideal split by any means, it's a little bit wonky at the top here, um, but you can see what I'm doing. Um, so again, you'll line your knife up and you can split all the way down to the bottom and what you're left with are two pieces of wood. And again, you know, knife-wise, if you're doing smaller carvings or you're putting something like this together for some firewood, you know, this is absolutely ideal for me. The benefit is for this um, over the others is that I can go out bushcrafting, I can just carry this knife with me and as long as I'm not really trying to sort of cut into anything this big, though you can do it at a pinch, this knife will be absolutely fine for preparing my firewood. If I maybe want to do a quick blank for a spoon, something like that, absolutely ideal. Right then guys, well that's pretty much it. I've just uh, tidied that up a bit with the fro, split it down a little bit to more to where I needed it to be for my next project. Um, but that was it, you know, it's a couple of quick ideas and a quick talk technique uh, for splitting down with a few different tools. Um, certainly stuff that I use all the time and find really, really useful. Um, hopefully you will too. A um, couple of quick things I forgot to mention. Um, in terms of wedges, you can also make them out of wood, um, especially if you're out in the field and you haven't got them with you or you don't want to carry the weight with you. Um, you can just literally knock them up within about five minutes um, and you can use them exactly the same as you would do the metal versions, uh, the benefit being they're disposable once you're finished with them. Um, also, sometimes people do ask me, if I'm trying to make something like this, um, why don't I use a saw? Um, and the short answer is it's actually really, really inefficient as far as energy goes. Um, I won't bother doing a demonstration, but I challenge anybody um, to take a piece of wood, that, as this was when we started with it, and cut it to this kind of shape and size with a saw. Um, do that, see how you get on, um, and then try using a fro or an axe or, or a wedge or what have you, um, and I guarantee you you'll find it a lot quicker and a lot easier. Um, but anyway guys, hope it was useful. Comment some questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks guys.